Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we will be discussing CognitiveType.com, Yuan Sandoval, aka Auburn's project on how your micro expressions in your face and your gestures and how you move your body are connected to your personality type. And what we have here is an extremely ambitious project, a book over 350 pages on the connections between personality type and the cognitive functions and visual typing. And Auburn himself has a fascinating history. He started off in Podler, but broke off and started doing his own thing on physiognomy.me. At physiognomy.me, I had the pleasure of working together with him for a few months. We spent the summer breaking down different patterns, exploring different celebrities, listening to interviews, studying patterns, finding out different things about them and how they spoke and how they expressed themselves through gestures and everything. So our methods came to become similar to one another. Our theories started developing similarly, but we broke off uh, and uh, started exploring things from different perspectives and came at different answers. Looking at Auburn's definitions of introverts and extroverts, he believes that the introvert, like Carl Jung, is navigated by the inner world where the extrovert is magnetically drawn to the outer world, what is happening around them versus what's happening on the inside. And here with these arrows we see a basic, very similar to the MBTI definition of introversion and extroversion with arrows pointing inwards or arrows pointing outwards. And ha here, the interesting thing is, that I would say that the introvert is not actually seeking to bring information inwards as much as they are seeking to take information that is on the inside. They are pulling information from the inside outwards using the top-down network in neuroscience, where the extrovert is taking information on the outside and bringing it inwards. So this is the difference here, where he focuses only on introversion and extroversion from this basic angle. True to this, it's more complicated. Extrovert is actually constantly bringing in new input to the inner world, where the extrovert, where the introvert, I should say, is bringing information on the outside, uh, on the inside out to the world. So when identifying the body language, of a person, you can't simply look at whether they are inside or outside, but you have to look at where they are taking and putting energy from the inside out, or if they are taking energy from the outside and putting it in. You will see extroverts constantly detaching from the world and from their surroundings as they are, have got, gathered information and are starting to engage in a form of discernment process to melt or feel if it was right or if it was wrong. And you will see introverts, after taking information and sharing a story, looking around them to see if everyone, how everyone was impacted by this story. And here another mistake begins, where Auburn starts talking about proactive and reactive energy. And here I feel like he is not using the proactive and reactive definitions as they are used in an environmental context, because the proactive process is so much not just about uh, taking in information or seeking out information around you. Uh, it's not necessarily what you create on the outside, as much as it can also be about something you create on the inside. It can be about organizing or controlling either your environment or your inner world. It can be about organizing information inside of you, categorizing it and putting it into different boxes. It can be about structuring your thoughts. It can be about shaping your thoughts and shaping your behavior uh, in advance of a situation. The proactive type is acting in advance of something to try to shape it, where the reactive or adaptive type, as I prefer to call them, is more based on acting defensively to adjust and to shape, shape and act and respond to things that are happening around them or in their own minds. They can see themselves uh, constantly adapting and twisting and building and changing and adjusting to what they are experiencing you know, on the inside or on the outside. Johan Sandoval wants to kind of align the introverted and extroverted duality with the proactive and reactive duality, but often I believe these are two separate things. The proactive type is a judging type, where the reactive type is a perceiving type. But these types do not exist in all Yuan's works. Uh, he leaves the MBTI and he goes more towards the socionics direction, where proactivity and reactivity, as defined from the MBTI context, 
is gone. Instead of the proactive and the judging and perceiving dichotomy of the MTI, he uses the traditional Jungian judgment and perception dichotomy, the rational and irrational dichotomy, where he speaks about people that are information gatherers, uh, perception types, as opposed to those that are judgment types. They would, uh, this would say discernment or decision-making types. So he differentiates between when we are actively searching for information around us compared to when we are discerning and twisting and weighing this information. So here, this dichotomy is actually very interesting and I believe these things exist. Uh, these are the differences of the intuitives and the sensors compared to the feelers and the thinkers. So this applies to different types. The INFPs and the INTPs group together as judgment types, where the INFJs and INTJs are grouped as perception types, with their weaker thinking or feeling process and the, the dominant intuitive or sensing process. Jung would say that the irrational type uh, is taking information irrationally without a reason just for the sake of getting information on its own. You could see it as a difference between having a hobby or having a passion or a cause or a mission in a sense because the person who has a hobby is doing it just because it's fun, just because they want to learn, just because they enjoy the experience but not because it provides any inherent value in itself. Similar to why you read about uh, toasters and how toasters work at 5 a.m. in the morning because you become fascinated by it but not because it has any rational implication. But the feeling and thinking types are said to be less interested in these activities. The feeling and thinking dominant types will pay more attention towards using and acting in ways that are rational, making decisions on rational criteria, taking in information that fits with their values and with their mission or their cause. And I believe that this is an interesting dichotomy, but I believe that we can and we strive and should strive towards a balance of these two things. We should strive towards making our passion a way to make the world or our own lives better. We should find ways to connect our hobbies and passions, making what we love to do what is good to do, uh, rather than keeping these two separate. We should engage in seeking to make our perceptions rational, just as a rational type or a rational drive should seek towards making a rational cause or a passion uh, into something fun and stimulating for the psyche. I believe that you can definitely see people that are more interested in following a passion and people that are more interested in following or working towards a mission, but I don't necessarily think that it's related to or written into their personality type as much as it is related to what a person has come to develop the most of. I have put the mentor and the prince or princess archetypes as the archetypes that are the most ruled by discernment or judgment uh, about making judgments about the world, making living in a way that is rational, living according to a cause or a principle or a system of morality, uh, where the child or the sidekick or the trickster archetypes in many ways respond to living in a world dominated by passions, hobbies, and fluctuating interests uh, to the purpose of just having fun. And I think you can see in yourself lives or times where you acted purely out of passion and times where you acted purely out of responsibility. I think that you'll find that these things vary rather than depend on or are fixed thanks to your personality type. Still, the cues he finds here to describe these two things I find are really interesting. The judgment behavior is so much more focused on making your body more rigid and linear, defending yourself with your gestures and with uh, your hands in some ways, showing some form of rigidity in the body rather than the fluidity where you are learning and engaging in and taking in and uh, responding to new information. You can see that when you are engaged in a judgment process, you're kind of distancing yourself from the world, where the perception type is in many ways approaching or letting themselves take in new things and have new experiences. Now if there is anything I would like to ask Auburn if he makes a video response to this is how does he deal with uh, differences in development 
how does he manage if a person looks or expresses themselves differently in a video or projects a persona as compared to who they really are? How does he differentiate between the bubbliness that you might put on for other people compared to who you are in reality? Now something I'm wondering about is how does Auburn deal with uncertainty regarding how to type others? How certain can he really be of what type you are? How often does he go back and forth between people? How often does he change his mind? How often do he look, take a ba look back at this and go, wait a second, that's not right. How certain does he feel when he types you? Uh, does he stumble still or do, does he think that his theories are perfect now? Um, if they're not, that's completely fine, really. That still doesn't take away from the magnitude of his work. Uh, but it's, it helps uh, to know how seriously we should take these issues and how certain we can truly be about it. Now, all in all, I think this is minor criticism. I think that the patterns he has found are fascinating. I think that the connections he's made are groundbreaking. I think he has gone further than anyone I know in exploring and making these theories publicly accessible by any individual. He's worked for, he says here in the book, more than three years, but it's more than that. I remember he started more than five years ago researching all of these things. I know he has had a difficult journey, a really difficult journey. I was there through part of it. I remember how he was uh, harassed by Podler. I remember how he broke out of Podler. I remember all the work he spent on physiognomy.me. This is a talented, gifted individual who has worked tirelessly to do something truly original and he should get all the credit for that hard work. But that is all I have to say for now. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like if you like this project, if you think it's interesting, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down below and maybe hopefully we can get some more information over time. I hope to see you guys in the next video.